Hi there, Bighorn owners. Today on your 2014 Heartland Bighorn, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Hydrostar's 1600 PSI hydraulic brake actuator. And this is what our actuator looks like when it's installed. We've mounted it just to the sidewall here in the front compartment. I like to have it up a little bit higher. This way it ensures that our reservoir is gonna be above our brake lines and our calipers, so you can easily gravity bleed it. If you got it down too low, you can still bleed the brakes, but it does make the bleeding more difficult. To get it up here, we did use a couple of short brackets that we sell here at E-Trailer that make perfect brackets. You can self-tap into the wall, and then you can just drill out your holes in the short bracket by just setting your unit on top and then just marking them. This actuator is gonna provide up to 1600 PSI of fluid pressure for our brake fluid going to our calipers at the back. And that's gonna be more than enough for our disc brakes to properly activate and stop our trailer in a significantly shorter distance than what electric drum brakes would do. The unit's going to operate similarly two electric brakes, there's four wires on it. You've got power and ground, which allow the unit to function. Those are hooked to the battery. And you've got your blue wire here, which is the brake signal from your brake controller, which would normally connect to your electric brakes. Instead, it attaches to our actuator because the pressure is what applies our brakes. And then our yellow wire here is for our breakaway switch. So we still have the same safety features that you would with electric brakes. The only difference here is that typically your breakaway switch is hooked to the blue wire on your electric brakes. This one has its own dedicated circuit so that way it knows that it was a breakaway event and it can apply the pressure appropriately. Now your actuator just comes by itself. It's only one component in a full electric over hydraulic setup. You'll also need your disc brakes, which you can either purchase as a full hub setup like we've got here, or you can get it where the rotor is separate from the hub so that way your rotor just slides on and off. But either way, you need to have a replacement unit here so you can have disc brakes on it. We're using a setup from Kodiak and you also need your line kit, which directs the fluid pressure from your actuator at the front back here to the brake. We're using Hydrostar's tandem axle kit since we've got two axles on this trailer. Now, when you do go to hook up the power circuit, you do wanna add a 40 amp circuit breaker into it so that way you've got proper circuit protection and 40 amps is gonna be plenty to ensure that our actuator here can receive enough current to apply up to that 1600 PSI. And we just mounted this here right on the back of the compartment wall next to all the rest of his electronics. And we'll take a quick look down. And this little strip right down here is the ground strip. So this is the white wire from the actuator. I did have to extend it a little bit to reach over here. So we use a little bit of 10 gauge duplex, which we also sell here at E-Trailer to make us get that length to this ground strip for our ground wire. We also use some 10 gauge duplex to take our signals from the seven way on our junction box here by our fifth wheel and route those inside. We were unable to locate the factory wiring. So we just cut those wires and then we attached our new wire to it here. And this is the blue wire coming from our seven way right here. This was the breakaway switch wire that was previously attached. We cut that breakaway switch wire and this is from the breakaway switch right here. We attached it to this white wire on our duplex. And remember this runs inside and connects to that yellow wire because we talked about how on your regular drum brakes, the breakaway switch just connects to the blue wire. We had to run a separate wire so we can get it connected to the yellow one. To get this routed, I just pulled down on this panel. There was a screw here and here. I did remove both of those screws so I could pull it down enough to give me a good gap. And then I used a metal coat hanger to push through here until it made its way out in this compartment here. And it came out right here. And I actually found it easier to go from this direction going forward and then come out on the fifth wheel side. And then I just routed it over to make our connection. We now need to bleed our brakes. So we've got our cap off. We're gonna leave the cap off while we bleed the brakes because it'll actually can suck the, uh, the rubber out from inside and potentially damage it. So we're just gonna fill up the reservoir now. We're using DOT3 brake fluid, which you can get at your local automotive store. And we're just going to fill it up to the first little lip on the inside. We don't want to go all the way to the top because as we're bleeding this and it's pressurizing the fluid, that pressurized fluid is eventually going to want to depressurize and it's going to slowly come back up. So it can actually overfill. So we want to kind of give us a little gap there. So now we're back here at the furthest brake caliper from our reservoir. Since we mounted it in the front on the driver's side, we're on the passenger side at the farthest back. 
You want to start at the furthest one away because that's going to get most of the air out first, making the other brakes easier to bleed. The bleeder screw is a 5 16 in size, that's the size of our wrench, and I just got a hose that's going down into a bucket to drain the fluid out just so we don't get fluid all over the place. We're going to have an assistant ensure that the fluid doesn't get too low, it maintained topped up, and have them activate the actuator. They can do this by either pulling the breakaway pin, or you can hook up to your truck and use the manual slider on your uh, brake controller. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up, and we're going to have the, our assistant go ahead and start it. Let's go ahead, Joe. And we've got nice, clean fluid coming out of there, so it's exactly what we want to see. You'll typically get a bunch of air bubbles at first, but then once it comes out clear like that, you can go ahead and take this off, move to the next brake, and so forth. So we're just going to move on to this one. You could go to the other side. It, at this point, the furthest one's the most important. Typically, you go furthest to closest, but uh, once you get this guy done, it gets the majority of the air out. Hit each other wheel. You usually only got to hit it one or two times to get the rest of the air out on those. And that completes our installation of Hydrostar's 1600 PSI hydraulic brake actuator on our 2014 Heartland Bighorn.